I will need time to put the entire truth of this world into the meager language to which your ears are accustomed. Oh God. <laughs> when I find my answer, I will pay you a visit. I'm very close to like just shoving her out the airlock. <laughs> okay, let's go up here. Now that we've cleared it all. We can't go up here. Oh, we can. Oh. Break their barrage. Right, the good guys here? Who's this dude? What's going on? Why are we still standing? What is going on? Oh, it's Navigator. Keep okay. your wits about you. What happened here, Navigator? The leader of the rabbit ship's crew wipes the sweat from his brow, an emotion char characteristic of navigators. Not with his whole hand, but with two fingers moving from left to right and back so as not to touch his third eye by accident. This movement is the only sign of fatigue he allows himself. His posture is immaculate, shoulders wide, eyes front, as if he did not just emerge from a grueling battle and is simply greeting you on the bridge of an uneventful day. My greetings, related ship. There is no need for introductions. I know the heirs of the Von Valancius line by sight. I am Han of House Cassini, the navigator of this vessel, and as the senior surviving officer, I assume command after the incident. As Han speaks, others glare at you with a sour attention. Up close, you can plainly see that every one of them is mutant. Their faces, their bodies, bear the mark of incredibly grotesque deforma deformities. The same as the muttering madmen who attacked you. However, Han's associates seem perfectly clear-eyed, showing no sign of madness. What happened to the ship and the crew, Han? This ship is assigned to the port of Dargonus. Some time ago, the captain was instructed to deliver a package, urgently by Han, to you, your ladyship. We were even shown a pic of your face. It's a photograph. <laughs> Navigator's voice seems calm, yet there is tension in his eyes which are trained on you. The disaster struck during the warp jump. I will never know all the details, as I was preoccupied with my primary duties. But for some reason, the captain decided to open the package. That, and as you may notice, have had most destructive impact on the crew. Han Franz. The package contained a chaos artifact. A chaos bomb, if you will. The moment it was removed from its protective cocoon, the crew began to lose their minds and mutate. The first to be afflicted was the captain and the senior officers, but the effect spread with incredible speed. Every deck was consumed by it, every last one. The raging mutants, no longer sane, damaged many systems. The ship was in distress and would have most certainly been destroyed had I not restored to make an emergency exit from the warp. The people you see here are only survivors. Or rather, the only ones who were able to retain both their lives and sanity. I gathered everyone I could isolate the source of the danger and sent out a stress signal. We were adrift waiting for help to come and fighting off mad crew members and then you arrived. So the chaos bomb package was meant for me. Who's the sender? As far as I'm aware, the order came from Gunrid Voitir, the master of whispers in the rogue trader's retinue. It is likely that he arranged the delivery either personally or through intermediary into me other people <laughs> Abelard's face turns a deep puce that blasted traitor beat us to the Dargonus and is now free to act with impunity it would not surprise me to find out that this was the work of sorcery how else could he have reached the world in such a short time heretic who is vested with leg legitimate power and whose lasted activities remain a mystery to all. Believe me, Titania von Shai, an individual like your former master of whispers will not stop at sending a chaos artifact in his attempts to destabilize your protectorate. Han pauses, then adds bluntly almost brazenly, your reaction suggests that you were not expecting a package of this sort. That is good to know. I'd almost convinced myself that the rogue trader was deliberately collecting chaos artifacts. Do not dare accuse me of colluding with chaos. Do you do not even suggest it? I beg your pardon. I am too tired to speak diplomatically. That's fair enough. You're forgiven. <laughs> However, the sender wanted all of this. Han makes a sweeping gesture at the destruction and corpses of crew members around him. To happen to your ship, not ours. Were you not affected by the mutations and madness? 
Well, that depends. I was born a mutant, you see. Khan smiles grimly and wearily. Navigate this taught to resist the influence of the chaos. And so I have been as best as I could. But I will be frank with you, I cannot be certain that I have avoided it completely. There have been no visible indications yet. All signs points to Han telling the truth. But you also notice clear evidence of just how difficult it is for him to struggle against the corruption. He is extremely tired, practically exhausted. Where is the artifact now? Tension in his posture and gaze becomes even more noticeable. I have placed it inside a protective sarcophagus, more reliable than the previous repository. Unfortunately, an artifact as powerful as this one could not be destroyed under the, these circumstances. Or rather, I had no assurance that it would not disintegrate every one of us and scatter us across several light hours in neighbouring space. But once we are off ship, I will absolutely find a way to destroy the vile thing. Face it, Hans, Cassini, you can't leave the ship. The corruption on the Chaos Bomb did afflict you, albeit not as strongly as the others, and you know this, I can tell by your reaction. I have been gazing into the eyes of the warp for as long as I remember. I can fight it. There is pride and aloofness in Hans' voice. Ah, we failed! We could lay mines in what remains of the ship and blast it along with the artifact from a safe distance. Now, do you know what? I'd, I think I'd try and tell... I don't want that... I don't want it on board my ship, but I think it would blast... Hmm. What's... Ah. Okay, we're going to blast it from afar. Your work is Hans paused, but he seems convinced. He relaxes a little, but then asks cautiously as if testing the waters. And what about me and the crew? Will you take us with you? You can come with me, but the remnants of the crew will be terminated. These people are beyond salvation. They are corrupted by chaos. That's so sad. Han jerks his chin up. These are my people. We lived through this nightmare together. I am responsible for them. All of us lead the ship or none of us do. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry, you've all been tainted by chaos. Death to the mutants. I can't. Mm. It goes against the grain. It really does. It goes against my grain. Oh. This could be an opportunity. Open. Does it hurts my soul? Exp Whenever we use navigator power, when they just navigate it in, uh, it hurts my soul. Let us not dawdle. So I'm thinking it's a nice ship. I don't want to crack it open. I do want to destroy it. So if I leave, can I destroy it? I feel so bad. Like, I feel awful. <laughs> I feel so bad. Wait, that is the only option? I can't just, like, ex destroy it from here? God damn it. So that is, if I kill everyone, then I have to do, I have to open it. <sighs> I want to open it. Can we just leave it? <laughs> well, that explains though, with Voitke, um, knowing my face and everything. 
Let's break open. Oh no, there, there it is. The container is covered in fine ornamental symbols among with the seal of the Navis Nobili and a personal coat of arms of the House Sassany stands out. The container is closed and sealed, but the lock does not seem particularly tricky. <laughs> Alright, let's give the order to lay mines. This thing must be destroyed along with the ship. And now we leave? Yes. Now we leave. I always have a backup plan. Honestly, I don't think I always have a backup plan. But that felt horrible. Like, I am not built for this game. I'm not built for this world. <laughs> Do you know that whole, you know, that last video game you played? Um, you now, you now live there? Yeah, the, the, yeah, that's just not me. I love this space dust. Right, I'm gonna have a look at the space dust. Ooh. Okay, what's in this space dust? Ooh. What's in this space dust? Ooh. What's in this space dust? What's in this space dust? I'm expecting a certain attack. Come on. No? Okay, I am not arguing. Not arguing. But it does mean that our capital might be in danger. Um, so next place is the capital, as if we can get to the capital. Like, the capital's all the way up here. Um, but you've got to be kidding me. My apologies, Lord Captain. The enforcers report that your pet Adari is in a foul mood and is moving towards the captain's bridge. We didn't dare to stop her, but I expect that you have a difficult conversation ahead of you. What did I do wrong? If she's gonna moan at me for destroying a freaking bomb that was gonna cause the entire crew to mutate and go a bit bananas, then, you know, I ain't done nothing wrong. Pretty sure I've done everything right. I know, she's gonna complain about the food. <laughs> that puts anyone in foul mood. If the food is terrible on a flight, you're in a foul mood for the rest of the flight. It has to be that. Yes. Please spare me a brief moment of your time, Elantak. Yulek quietly appeared beside the throne, exhaustion and anger set upon her brow. Surion knows that I do not care about the curious glances of Monkey. I grew inured to them back in the blossoming gardens of the Lilithon. They curse me from afar. They follow my every move. They ward themselves against me. Let them. After all, what can be done with such weak-minded, primitive creatures? And still... One monkey stunt has caused the cup of my patience to spill over. She dared to approach me, to speak to me, and touching my hand, she... she suggested that we withdraw somewhere private, she wanted, wanted, Kimura. The mere memory of it stirs up a tempest in my soul. She wanted to do what? <laughs> um. My people have behaved contemptibly, and I apologize for it. I. Accept your words, Ellen Tuck. And still, try to imagine Ellen Tuck being lusted after by a wild beast. It is foul, disgusting, so vile that it makes your very soul shudder. Now, is this the question on the fact that she's been lusted over by humans or monkeys? Um, that she's really, really disgusted? Um, yeah, there you go. I'm also repelled by the thought of a human desiring another. Um, <laughs> I, 
I understand this incident was unpleasant for you, but it does not mean that all humans are animals. No. Your kind, simple souls and narrow minds are the root of all these flaws. Narrow minds and simple souls. Every day, I feel as if I am caught in a trap, surrounded by a pack of wild animals. I am prepared to pay this price to find my kin, but everything has its limit. There you go. Perhaps you would stop insulting the human race at every turn. Hmm. Your species is sensitive to the truth. I will have to remember that. <laughs> Uh... No, I do not think you fully understand human thoughts and actions. It will take time, but I can help you make sense of them. I have walked the path of awakening, Ellen Tark, and learned to see that which is hidden and hear that which is unspoken. When I found myself on the Lilithon, I watched your kind long enough to understand the true nature of Monkey. I do not think you can tell me anything I do not already know. <laughs> Nevertheless, I will not protest. Conversations with you are the only thing on this ship that can ease my solitude. Oh, that's lovely. But you are a Xenos and strange and unknown creature and humans strive to understand the unknown. For the unknown is the most frightening thing of all. Had any of them wished to understand my nature, they would have already run away in fear from one who walks the path of the outcast. But they are just trying to provoke me, hurt me. No, Monkey are driven by their instincts to survive, to breed, to ensure the preservation of their species and the annihilation of those who threaten them. It is neither good nor bad. It simply is. I mean, she's got humanity in the Warhammer universe on the freaking head. We, we just want to breed and survive and take over the whole freaking expanse and fervor. <laughs> but sometimes we struggle to understand the motives behind our own actions. It was emotions that once brought down my kind, Ellen Tuck, toppling us from our pedestal as rulers of the galaxy. Indulging your weaknesses or whims does not make your species any more attractive. I'm not asking you to find us attractive, but I am trying to tell you that all humans are different. My people's interest in you was not intended to be an insult. Ellen Tark, please understand that I do not find Monkey attractive. The mere thought of being intimate with one of your kind. <sighs> <laughs> no one asked you to. You could have said no! Our conversation has only proved my point, Ellen Tuck, that Monkey and the children of Azurian are as different as night and day. Eldari do not simply see the world differently. They see more than any monkey can ever comprehend. And what do you see in a world around us that I do not? What do I see? Your words ring with the desire to know the soul of another. But will you be able to comprehend my answer? I mean, you can try. Hmm. I will need time to put the entire truth of this world into the meager language to which your ears are accustomed. Oh God. <laughs> when I find my answer, I will pay you a visit. I'm very close to, like, just shoving her out the airlock. I really am so close to shoving out the airport. Does he have anything new to say? Lord Captain. New? Lord Captain. Do you have anything more to say? You have my complete attention. Uh, you wanted to discuss the nature of your mission. Yes, but not here. I wouldn't want our conversation to be gossip fodder on the bridge and in the officer's mess. That's fair enough. Let's go to our, my chambers. Uh, 
Henrik's look nods slightly. Thank you for finding an opportunity to talk. I trust now would be a good time to explain the reason for my return aboard your ship. I welcome the chance to assist the Inquisition with its inquiries, Van Kalox. Lord Captain, your enthusiasm is commendable. The interrogator smiles, but his eyes remain cold. Do business then. The cult of the final dawn. The madmen preach the heretical doctrine among the denzines of the Coronas expanse and instigate crimes against the throne and humanity. One, cri one such crime took place in your protectorate. The Lord Inquisitor considered it necessary to have one of his acolytes accompany the rogue trader on a voyage into the corrupted region. I also need to meet with one of my observers on the capital world of your domain. A chaos cult in my protectorate. Henrik, are you laying an accusation against my dynasty? Chaos treads softly, Titania von Shire. The main danger of secret cults and sects is that your their all the 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 sect is that they are like seeds. They can remain in the ground for decades, safe from all scrutiny, until an opportunity to sprout, grow, and bear monstrous fruit presents itself. The emergence of a cult on one of the rogue traders' planets does not mean the dynasty head herself is a chaos worshipper. Having said that, it should be noted that Theodora von Valentius was famous for her loose interpretation of the freedoms granted by the warrant. Henrik regards you with a probing look. A bloodline can be stained by ancestral transgressions. If it is indeed so, it is in your best interest to do whatever necessary to redeem yourself, and then perhaps you will get a chance to salvage your dynasty's reputation. The Lord Inquisitor mentioned in his letter that he's willing to show lenience towards my actions that would otherwise be interpreted as radical. Henrik nods. That is correct. I should show greater tolerance for the mistakes of a newly appointed rogue trader. To be frank, I am surprised the Lord Inquisitor is not the type to indulge the weakness of soul and mind, even in someone who has only recently accepted the burden of a lofty title. You have spies on the Von Valantius Welts. The person I mentioned is not a spy, but a secretary in the administratum department on Dar Dargonon Dargonus. The plant's governor and Theodora were fully aware of his status. His duty is to is to fulfill the sacred oath of the Golden Throne and eliminate threats to the Imperium, which the Coronas expansion has in abundance. His name is Archilius Scalander. As soon as we contact Dargonus, I will introduce you as the new head of the dynasty. I am sure you'll be appreciate the presence of such an advisor among your subjects, and I suggest you heed his words at least occasionally. Why would Ordo Xenos agents investigate the Chaos Cult? Oh, you are well versed in how the Inquisition, Inquisition is organized, Titania von Shire. Yes. Initially, our arrival in the Coronas Expanse was dictated by the need to fight Xenos. But there is more. The cult is tangentially related to my main specialization. Perhaps I will be able to reveal the full truth someday. But right now, I ask you to display humility, humility and patience. I want to know more about the cult of the Final Dawn. Chaos worshippers, most often agents of the throne, run into lone renegades stirring up the rabble, insane prophets and hysteric visionaries preaching the end of days, passing comments, a mutant rebellion, an onslaught of monsters, and each time they come up with a new reason why people should prostrate themselves and quiver in fear. Much effort and the blood of those loyal to the Golden Throne was spent before we established a connection between those heretics. However, the cult of the final dawn is something greater than a gaggle of misguided seers and fortune tellers. They clearly spread their agents all over the Corona's expanse, disseminating no, disseminating heresy among honest people on the Imperial worlds. There is a certain strategy to their actions and changes whenever we get too close. And finally, they have enough military power to have had two ships that we had sent after them later discovered as wreckages. The growing difficulty in making warp jumps is detrimental to us, but is unlikely to inconvenience those who engage in vile sorcery day in and day out. Hemmick sighs. After the events from Reichad Menoris, I suspected the cult might have built its nest inside Winterscale's domain. But the latest reports indicate it is your protectorate that is harboring heretics. 
Being in your entourage proves my chance of getting closer to their secrets. Yikes! I have already agreed to give you a place aboard my ship. What else? The rogue trader should deliver me to the system that contains industrial world of Kayaba Gamma. I will then accompany you to the surface and determine what the cult is planning and how it intends to use the resources that have fallen into their clutches, which may very well include the blessed engines of the Adaptus Mechanicus and even the followers of the Omnisire themselves. I will be frank. The answer to this question is unlikely to please either of us. The machinations of chaos usually go beyond solely inflicting countless deaths and destruction. Having their plans come to fruition would lead to far more terrible consequences. One of the systems in the Corona's expanse is already lost. May the Emperor protect us from watching this tragedy play out again. Why did your suspicion fall on Kai of Agama? Disjointed piece of data that finally emerged into the single picture. Additionally, not long ago, a vessel from that world arrived in footfall. The reports from the crew were confused and alarming, making me fear a planet-wide rebellion. We met a Chaos Space Marine on Riker Menoris. Do we risk running into his brothers? I have no doubt it will happen sooner or later, Titania Von Shire. Chaos Marine siding with the cult is very, very bad news. Most likely they kept away until recently, pulling their puppet strings from a respectable distance. These traitors seldom show up alone. The best we can count on is having to deal with just a squad of Chaos Marines on the Corona's expanse, and not an entire company. I wouldn't let anyone throw their weight around on my world, be they servants of chaos, xenos, or heretics. A commendable aspiration for a person who holds the fates of billions of peoples and dozens of imperial worlds in her hands, which is why you need to be ever more vigilant when looking for seeds of corruption on your planet. At least they sprout someday and spell doom for whatever is tangled up in their roots. That is enough discussion about the archenemy servants. Tell me about the Drakari who stole Rikard's son. Henrik's winces. The Drakari, one of the branches of the Eldari and an ancient, a vicious Xenos race. Those creatures are living terror to ordinary people who fall prey to their raids, and for the simple reason that the victims are not just killed outright, but instead become their playthings. Just as you and I need air to survive, the Drakari require psychic energy born from torment and pain, which they can extract from their captives with uncanny expertise. Their ships, which are difficult to mistake for any other, arrive suddenly undetected. Their stealth technologies greatly surpass the capability of standard Imperium or Gora rays. The objective of their raids is never to capture a world or a ship. <laughs> no. They are only interested in fresh victims. After filling their holds with living captives, they disappear into the webway, a different dimension which conceals their greatest stronghold, Komonara, the dark city of the Drakari, from which none can hope to escape. Henrik studies your expression. I do not know why the Drakari stole Rikard's son and brought about the fulfillment of the cult's prophecies. Perhaps the Xenos themselves have played into the arch enemy's design, or perhaps Aurora's divinations, in fact, scribed the Drakari's actions. There is only one thing I can say with absolute certainty. There is no alliance between the cult of the Final Dawn and the Xenos. It is simply impossible. Well, I must go on my business. Is there anything else I must need? Let me put it this way. You may think whatever you want me, but my goal is not to hinder you. I'm here to help you in the fight against foes you may not even be aware of. You have my word that I will provide every assistance in uprooting the heresy that has sprouted on the Van Valencius worlds while their mistress was away, and that I will try to be more patient with the less grievous flaws the bearer of the warrants are sometimes known to have. Henrik inclines his head. Thank you for sparing the time, Lord Captain. Ooh. Okay. I really, really want to get to the capital uh, to make sure that all, all is well. I do get a feeling there is soon... Oh, wait. Where am I going? <laughs> as soon as I left off, it's going to be like, Lord Captain, we need you again. always the way always needed <laughs> at least Abelard stopped having a moan at me okay let's go here I've just begun a new stage of development okay was it why 
Your ladyship, there is an alarming report coming from Janus. A number of strange mutations have been spotting among the population in remote agri-complexes. Aside from the obvious dis disfigurement and subsequent estrangement, these mutants called wretches by the rest of the colonies are coming together to practice a primitive form of religion and involve a ritual worship of the land. While they display no disobedience or hostility, their very existence is concerning. The Janus nobility humbly awaits your decision. Oh, jeez. What do we know about these wretches? Their mutations causes the loss of skin pigment and the shedding of hair. The eyes of some have started developing a nictating membrane similar to that of reptiles. Others succumb to progressive atrophy, atrophy of the larynx, causing loss of human speech. And at the same time, their tendons become denser and more elastic, providing increased endurance and load resistance. The wretches are commonly ostracized due to their grotesque appearance. There haven't been too many cases of mob justice yet, but they will become commonplace after the mutation deformities become more obvious. The wretches tend to form groups with similarly afflicted people with their average level of intelligence is low. They all belong to the labor caste and communicate among themselves using a primitive vernacular of their own invention. As for their barbaric religion there define both soil and janus itself to them work in agri complex is a form of worship which has had a positive impact on productivity what do my advisors say i saw your agents picked for cordons assigned these monkeys leave behind their idols and i cannot deny a pathetic foe extremely abstract connection to the symbols of my people their guttural prayers echo the sound of the children of a Saurian speech. The probability of them having come into such close contact with our civilization is non-existent, yet they are still somehow connected. Protect these people, resettle them to distant abodes where they will not be harmed for their peculiarities, and keep watch someday the truth may be revealed. The blessed sanction of the Imperium does not grace these mutants, but nor does it declare their existence anathema. Should we sentence them without further study, there are mutants whose existence is fully sanctioned, such as the organs, ratlings, pariahs, pelagers, felindids, or troughs. Our library has many treaties on the janitor's craft, and I could impart some of that knowledge to your servants, purely theoretical, of course. This mutation has not been properly studied and is missing from the catalogue. Not registering a basis of delaying the commencement of immediate genetic purification, I recommend launching a thorough investigation into the genetic makeup of these forbidden strains. Um. Okay, we settled the wretches into a separate agri complexes where the crowds will not tear them apart and we will study them. I feel these monkey have been touched by something wondrous. The mutants were resettled to a distant agri complexes where their unorthodox appearance will not put them in danger of being massacred by the serfs. The mutants were put under surveillance and one of the watchmen spotted a mysterious relic in the hands of a group of uh, wretches that turned out to be an item of Xeno origin. It is unlikely that the mutants understood the nature of the object they are worshipped. Okay, oh, did we get it yet? I'm not ready for... Okay, did we get that? So who can actually wield that? Not me. Wait, could you wield it? No. Can you wield it? No. Can you wield it? No. Can you? No. Then no one can wield it. That's a Chikari weapon. She can, but not yet. Uh, I didn't mean to do that one. Fly. I meant to do... Yeah, newest, oldest. Wait. I mean, they're both. That's eight to twelve as well. Hmm. 
I have left them soak right. Five to eight now. I do miss having him as a uh Show the way to figure out well, that's a two hundred gun. Oh, we should be fine. Yeah. Oh. Scan these worlds. I feel like we've got loads of plastic. Ooh, I was going to say, not, exp not explored? Do you mean we can actually go down there? Vlogiston. I don't know what that is, but yeah. Let's, let's go explore. Ooh, ooh, what is this? <laughs> Whole lot of oohs. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> uh, surviving piece of archaeotech mechanism of unknown purpose discovered. Ooh, I wonder if we can, like, piece them all together. Nothing. I feel like they took some Mass Effect kind of um, inspo here. I, I for me being. Uh, and I feel like that maybe um, I'm gonna hear the Reapers come in and I have to run away. I think I've got enough plastic. I do, I do get that feeling like I'm constantly waiting for the, the Reaper noise to come in. Gosh, we have to go this way. Permission to report, Lord Captain, and keep receiving messages about strange behaviours in certain ship systems. All decks report that the uncontrollable opening and closing of doors, gates, and airlocks. They behave erratically and do not obey the operator's commands. Regrettably, this has led to casualties among the crew. The tech priests have explained that these phenomena are being caused by the machine spirits' irresistibility and have spent hours chanting litanies to soothe their anger. Unfortunately, many crew members were badly injured before the prayers could stabilize the system. I just feel like my ship is going to start trying to murder me from the inside. Ooh. Plundered Void Station. Oh, well, let's go deal with the pirates. We sight a ship hovering over a void station. The vessel bears no identifying marks, but the landing craft swarming the stations below makes the situation clear. Pirates are seized an Imperial outpost. The augurs detect that the pirate ship is warming up its engines and quickly reloading its cannons. It is preparing for battle. Uh, attack first. Let's deal with the pirates. deal with the pirates i hope there's not like tons of ships there probably is i lift up my voice in prayer for this vessel and its hallowed guns thank you sister i appreciate that um
clearly do not have any. We're starting off a little hard. We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to be cheeky and be like, ram into us. Oh, cheeky cheeky. Ow, ow, this, this hurts, this hurts, this hurts lots. Talk about it. I could actually be destroyed here. <laughs> Text of reporting all breaches. Executing damage control. Yep, this this hurts. I think we're gonna die. I do. I think we're. I think we're dead. I think we're so dead. <sighs> we're so dead. We're so dead. No. <laughs> I hope it's safe before we done we like jumped into this.
I hope we did. Oh, good, it did. Ooh, that's a cool kind of looking planet. How did I not notice the big old freaking sun in the background? I don't want to ram. That one's out. That one's like, I'm bye, I'm, I'm away, bye. Can he actually flee? That would be interesting. That took that took some Oh no, I didn't. No, it's gonna explode. I didn't hurt that much. I expected to hurt a lot more. I don't know if I can do this fight. I'm starting this fight with a bit of a disadvantage. Oh 
Persians! Can I not? That's rude. Oh jeez. I did not... I do feel like they're just flying away. Just out of reach of that. No, we're good for our shields. Yeah, it's just gonna explode. I can get this, so at least I can take some of the The whispers are ravenous. I wish there was like a little way of can we warp out of here? <laughs> I understand why it's saying one. Can I come here? And then explode? Come on, that should have been, that's gonna get straight on me. Because I didn't think. they fled oh so there is a way to flee then okay Ooh. i didn't go as well as i was hoping what was it uh b we need to we need we need we need more of this we need more scrap I 
I have no idea where we're going. 